Welcome to the most celebrated birthday in the world, Christmas. Christmas is a combination of two words, Christ and Mass, or rather, the celebration of Christ. Traditional cultural expressions of Christmas have dominated our celebrations over the years. And you see them gradually taking over what really Christmas is. Whether it is the German tree or the cards, or carols, the American Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas, sometimes known as Father Christmas, and the children think it is Father Thomas. Except when I don't bring the gifts that they expect. <clears throat> A few years ago, I remember we, every year we had the tradition of looking for Christmas trees. And we panicked one year because we couldn't find the tree. And, and the panic made me sit down and think, has the tree taken over our lives? Thank God for artificial trees. But the, the amount of time, energy, searching where are these trees, who is doing the decoration? We were spending so much, so much time on that, forgetting what Christmas really was. The decorations and the tree and related matters. Of late, commercial Christmas, or celebrating the escape from reality, has taken over Christmas. Commercial Christmas means now people feel compelled, compelled that they should do some shopping for Christmas. And so they go and take the school fees which they need for January and go and do the shopping in December and then they look desperate in January. The compulsion of the world telling us how to celebrate Jesus' birth. Of late, I've also seen a lot of celebrations and the reality of those celebrations comes down to escape from reality. Escape from reality. From pain. Escape from problems. A temporary panacea. A temporary escape has become also part of the tradition. Spending too much is a Christmas tradition now. Dining too much. You know, there are two sides to the human body. One is called eating. The other one is called drinking. And when you eat too much, it's called gluttony. When you drink too much, it's called drunkenness. And so somewhere, this has also become part of the tradition of celebrating Christmas. Of late, I've also seen young people driving too fast. And when they drive too fast, they feel they are celebrating. Irrespective of the laws of the road, where you have to stop, four-way stops, everybody respects each other. Not for Christmas. After all these celebrations, excessive driving, drinking, eating, they eventually find themselves suffering from a post-Christmas down syndrome. And literally down on the floor, trying to get up from where they fell to make something out of life or what is left of it. They ask themselves, from where in Christ's name am I? As they get up from the floor. It's time for us to reclaim Christmas. The real meaning and purpose of Christmas. Sometimes we think it is one day. Some years ago, one of my children came to me and said, I want to celebrate my birthday. I said, fine, 
It's in December. I said, no, this is, it was in June. And she said she wants to celebrate it in June. So I said, do you want to move it from December to June? She thought for a while and said, no, I want June now. Then we will discuss December later. And in conversation, it became clear that she was actually asking for a birthday celebration every month. So I said, this doesn't work well for us. That if you have a celebration every month and I have one every month, but she got me thinking. She got me thinking. Am I not supposed to be celebrating my birthday every day? Am I not supposed to be celebrating Christ's birthday every day? When I woke up this morning and my limbs could move and I could breathe, and last night I was struggling to breathe, this morning when I could breathe, I told myself, thank you, Lord for the gift of this new day given to me. It's my birthday. I have another day that God has given me, and that is the essence of birthday. And every day when I celebrate my own, I can also say, thank you, Lord, for coming into my life. Take residence in my life. So we celebrate together. Christ and me, we celebrate together a birthday today. And that is the essence this young lady taught me. Yes, indeed, Christmas is the most abused of birthdays. So then, what is Christmas? Celebrating Christmas is celebrating the good news. The good news of the birth of Christ. But there is more to the good news. Yes, the historical birth of Jesus Christ, but more importantly, the contextual and current birth of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ that brings new life into our lives, even into our messy lives. That is the celebration of Christmas for me. Christ being born contextually today into my situation, no matter what my situation is, and messy situations. The birth of Jesus Christ for me is the transition from the mess to the mass. Or rather, the mass which is a celebration in the mess. It's not about cleaning up the mess, and then celebrating, but it is celebrating within the mess. Because the more you try to clean up yourselves, it never happens unless he cleans up, you will never be clean. So don't worry about, I'm not good enough syndrome. I'm not clean enough syndrome. Don't worry about that. That's God who makes us clean and better. Our role is to invite him in. Let him come in and let him clean up. He's in the cleaning business. That's what he does. He prefers to clean rather than a cleaned up environment. And he cleans up the way he wants. According to his purpose plan, for your life and my life. Genesis 1 verse 1, 2 and 3 reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth and upon the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving, some versions it says hoovering, over the face of the waters. Verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. The mess becomes the mass through the word from God. The darkness suddenly saw light as God declared the light into the world. And that's why today you saw the enactment of John 1.1. When the priest went down to the middle of the church 
to proclaim the gospel from there. What does John 1, 1 say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the light was the light of man. That's why we connect to that beginning to realize and to know that this Jesus we celebrate is God. He was there with the Father. From the mess to the Mass, through the Word of God. The birth of Jesus in a manger, in a cattle shed, is not the glamorous picture you see, but a messy cattle shed with animal mess, leftover cattle feed, spilled water, waste. Christ was born in that mess. Christ was born in that mess. I saw a contemporary version of three wise women going to see the, the child Jesus at the crib. And they said, if we were there, we would have taken a box of nappies, we would have taken milk, we would have, not the, what the wise men brought from the East. Practical. They mess was real. The mess was real. Not having a place to give birth was real. Not having a room in a hotel was real. And into that situation was born Christ. Not just the physical mess, but the world into which he was born was also in a mess. The world into which he was born was in a messy state. Hence, his birth. And when we invite him into, to be born again today into our lives, remember, he is familiar. He's familiar with mess. All kinds of mess. Including the messy herald who wanted to get rid of him even before he was a child. Messy herald did not want competition. So he was Familiar with that kind of mess, people who stand in your way, who see you as a threat, who want to remove you from your office because they have eyes for that office. He was familiar with that. He was familiar with the things that people do to each other, against each other. He was familiar with that. So don't worry or be ashamed about your mess. Jesus is the master of mess. He is comfortable in your and my mess. Sometimes when we go through mess, we think our mess is unique. We think that we are exceptionally messy than other people. So we do some self-condemnation. Instead of self-critique, we do some self-condemnation. Before I went for theological training, I, I had acquired a master's degree. MML, master's degree in messy lifestyle. And that was, of course, it was a hindrance humanly because they rejected me in the seminary. They didn't want me there. The world may not see your potential at any given state. The world may not see your potential. No matter the mess you're in, you are called to see beyond your mess. That's why we are called to be a people of hope. No matter the situation we are in, we are not called to remain there. We are called to a new vision, new dreams, re-energize. Last night I was praying for somebody in another continent, another place, and I said, may God bless the restructuring 
of your company and of your investments. And may he bring new life into your situation. Why did I say that? Because our God is a God of new beginnings. He renews things. He can start afresh something you have not seen, I has not seen, nor ear heard what God has prepared for those who love Him. Two things that happen when Christ is born into our mess. One, there is light. And secondly, there is life. There is light and there is life. You know, sometimes our mess is so much that we may not begin to see any hope. Positive thinking is an important element in life. Positive thinking. No matter your situation, learn to be positive in your thinking. There was a, an article I was reading uh, some years ago. There was a big strike by garbage collectors in New York. In one particular area, there was garbage piled up, and this was Christmas season. It was coming up to Christmas Day, and the garbage began to pile up. And so the residents of that area came out and said, this is really messy. We need to take it up with the authorities, etc. Nothing happened. They are on strike. One man said, let's make something out of this. What did they do? They piled up all the garbage together from the whole street, brought it together, then made it into the shape of a tree, the garbage, all the plastic bags, this, that, and the other, into the shape of a tree. Somebody went and got Christmas lights and put it around it. Can you celebrate Christmas in a mess? Yes, you can. It's positive thinking. How can you convert even a bad situation into a good situation. Light and life is God's gift to us in Christ. Light is revelation. Light is revelation. As we walk into a dark and messy room and switch on the light, we see the room and its contents. It's mess, but also you must see the potential mass, the celebration that can happen in that mess. Christ is our light. Let him be born into our lives and we will have revelation in the light of Christ, revealing Christ, revealing truth. As you read in the, in the psalm today, the truth is what will set us free. You see, Christ reveals himself to us and we are also revealed as we are. It's very important. It is important to know that Christ reveals himself to us in the light, but we also reveal ourselves. So that when the revelation of ourselves happens, it is the meeting of the truth in the mess. The truth meets the mess in the light of Christ. And the truth is, God loves you. The truth is, God loves you in the midst of your mess. Don't try to do more than what you are called to do. You will never be better trying to please God, for all men have fallen short of the glory of God. But, but you turn to him and he begins that process of cleansing and cleaning us up. Christ is our light. Christ reveals himself and also the light reveals us in the truth. Don't be a lover of dim lights. You know, dim lights don't reveal much. Dim lights don't reveal much. Just like dim uh, mirrors don't reveal much. God looks for spotlights. Why 
Why is the dim light a problem? I, I, I'm a victim of the same dim light. Because there are certain things that you look at makes you look good. That's why some people go to a certain passage in the Bible and they're very happy with that passage all the time. But sometimes they encounter a passage which tells them the truth. The truth about themselves. And they don't want to hear that. It's like the, I've said, told you this before, it's like this mirror in my house. There's one which is very clear. When I stand there in front of that mirror, I can see every spot. And that's when the one that tells me my real age. He tells me the truth. This is who you are. All those spots, all that hair which was there, it's, I think it's still there, but it's not there. In that mirror, it will tell me the truth. Then there's the other one. As we go out of the house, there's one I particularly like looking at because it makes me look good. It makes me look good. It hides the truth. It's blurred. And so I'm comfortable with that. And I think I'm going out. I'm looking good. And as you walk out, somebody tells you, Father, you forgot to put your... Oh, I forgot. It didn't show me the things that I need to do and the things that are the truth about me. Allow God to shine the spotlight on your life so that the truth will set you free. What do you see of yourself that is inadequate, inappropriate, and limiting for your full potential and purpose? What do you see that is negative about yourself? If you hide in the dim light, you will be missing out on life, abundant life, the true, truth-revealing life. And what is life? To have life and to have it in full is to experience a life of salvation and deliverance. To have life in Christ and to have it in full is to experience life of salvation and deliverance. What does salvation define itself? Salvation is freedom from limitations. Freedom from limitations. That is, deliverance from what limits or constrains us to achieve our full potential. Who wants to steal and rob from us? The devil. God wants the best thing for us. And when something that we can expose within ourselves will take us to new heights is blocked. That's not God. He will reveal the truth. And he will help us. And give us freedom from the limitations we've been struggling with. Hence, confession and forgiveness is a process of salvation. The freedom from limitation. Whenever you are willing to say it, that I have a problem. You ask Alcoholic Anonymous, they will tell you. The moment the person say, I have a problem, you have won. The biggest problem is the person saying, I don't have a problem. The moment the person says, I have a problem, it is the beginning of hope. A person with a cleansed conscience can enter into the presence of God. And is delivered from limitations in life. Attention and purpose is delimited. You suddenly become a new person. You begin to see things about yourself that you never saw before. Don't let other people dictate to you who you should become. Let God show you who you are. As in Philippians, new life is the portion given to those who are patient and humble, as the case is with Jesus. The one who was in this position agrees to come down to our level 
and begins to take on our burdens and heaviness and begins the process of freeing us from our limitations. So why live in half capacity? Experience full potential. Allow Christ to be born into your mess, my mess. Sometimes I've asked in my prayers, Lord, why did you leave me in my mess for a long time? I could have come to know you much earlier. And the answer that I got was, because I needed you for a special assignment. The more messy you become, the more valuable you become. Because when God wants to send you on an assignment where you are supposed to deal with the messy, you need to have compassion. You need to have, understand their mess. You don't condemn them on the first meeting. And I wanted you to go through it. To know that grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you as I pick you out from the mess for those who are still in the mess. Receive his blessing and be a blessing to others. The birth of Christ is his story. Make it your story. Make it your story. Let him be born in you and together celebrate his birthday and yours. Let him in. Just let him in. If you have let him in, then happy birthday, Jesus, who lives in you. Welcome from the mess to the mass, Christ mass, or Christmas. Thank you, Father, for giving us your Son. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.